Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be going over some of the cool new features and changes in the upcoming Android Q release. Now this is just the first beta, so of course these are all subject to change, especially the visuals and the bugs, we hope at least. Now the vibrations in this build are a little inconsistent. Sometimes you get one, sometimes you don't, and it's usually noticeable when you start typing on the keyboard with the haptic feedback enabled. It feels like you're typing on glass. And of course, you have some apps that just flat out won't work at all. So whether Android Q will be suitable for you is pretty much up to the apps that you use. Some great resources to get started with would be the Android underscore beta subreddit. I'll have that link down below. It's an official one for Android Q beta and probably the other betas that come out since Google Plus is shutting down. So I'll link their wiki and their pin post down below so you can see what apps are working and apps that aren't working and also how to report issues. Now safety net also seems to be passing with these beta builds, so you can probably use Google Pay and other apps that require an untampered device. So first up we have the settings app. Now I'm actually unable to dismiss any of the recommendations, those cards at the top, which I'm sure they'll fix later on. And when you go into a menu option and you come back out, the list will shift up a little bit, which does get annoying if you need to go back into those menus quickly. Now you can also search within app lists, finally, and I really can't say how long I've been waiting for this. So now you don't have to scroll around to find the app that you need. You can just search it, which is really good. And also the settings hub at the top where you have your do not disturb enabled or the nightlight, that also has gotten a new splash of paint. Not that I ever need to expand those items, but it's nice to see some visual changes here and there. Now heading down to the developer options, we have some feature flags which is pretty much like Chrome's flags menu. So you can enable and disable these experimental features. So go ahead, have a look at through those, uh, but we'll be taking a look at the long press screenshot to start recording flag. So when you long press on the screenshot item in the power menu, you'll get this new activity that comes up with some options for recording your screen. Now it doesn't record system audio at this moment, but it can record the microphone and also show your taps on the screen. And I'll have a sample of the recording here. Okay, sample screen recording, blah, blah, blah. My pointer location, pretty cool. And we also have a variety of accent colors to choose from under the new theming section at the bottom of the developer options. So you got the usual pixel blue, your black, green, and purple. You can also change the font to something a bit more serif if you like that kind of stuff. And you can also change the icon shapes for most things, including the quick settings tiles now, if people could make custom themes from this, that would be awesome. But I think people have theorized this for a while now and nothing has really come up except for, you know, OMS and Substratum and things like that before. But we'll have to wait and see on how this pans out. Now, moving on to the network section, now you can connect to Wi-Fi networks by scanning a QR code. You can generate one for your currently connected network. And there's also a privacy option here to enable the use of a random MAC address when connecting to these Wi-Fi networks. Now onto the permissions, which is one of the more exciting parts of the Android Q beta. So there are two types of permission dialogues now. One is done prior to runtime, so the apps that use the older permission model, and of course the newer runtime permissions model from Marshmallow and above, where it asks you when you open the app. Now have a look at Scanner Redacted and Ingress Prime apps as an example of the two differences here. Now location can be granted when the app is currently being used, what we've seen on iOS before as well, which is a good step in the right direction or you can always enable location access all the time. Now, if we actually take a look at the app info page here in the settings, you can actually see when you go into other menu options, such as the permissions, it actually disables that row of icons and buttons up there. And it's a bit weird that how they'll show that even though you can't use it. But anyways, we have this new privacy section in the settings um, app. So here you can browse apps by app permissions. I think we've seen that somewhere else before as well. You can now show or choose to show password characters as you type, or you can disable that. And lock screen notification content options, so that's similar to what we would have found on the lock screen settings. And we also have some Google and Android related privacy settings, such as Google's autofill service, location history, advertising or targeted ads, and also the sending of usage and diagnostics to Google themselves. So it's nice to see all these options centralized into one settings menu. Probably the biggest thing here is when you toggle on battery saver mode, the system wide dark mode is enabled. It's very AMOLED screen friendly since it uses pure black in most cases, but on some apps it does use that more of a darker gray instead. And speaking of AMOLED friendly, let's talk about some visual changes here. 
So there is a new app opening animation and the reveal curves into the screen which makes it quite immersive and I like these little touches that they put in. And there's also product, sans, all the things here. So you're going to see a lot of that font everywhere. And the notification shade battery shows an estimated time left of your battery instead of a percentage now. Screenshots now include the hardware notches and curves. Now I'm not sh too sure why this is a thing, but they should have this as an option. I know some people wouldn't be too happy with this, myself included. It just seems kind of pointless to have a notch in your screenshot. It's already bad enough, right? Uh, but anyways, the options to allow an app to install unknown apps has also gotten a little redesign here. And also the app install screen takes on more of a dialogue appearance rather than a full-fledged activity, which is really nice to see. And the lock screen power options are also displayed on the bottom half of the screen, which looks pretty cool. Now on the ambient display, we have a few changes here. Now we have a new incoming notification look. It's a little bit more jarring and noticeable, but sometimes I do prefer how it came up previously on Pi, it was uh, much more subtle. Now the battery is also shown in the top right hand corner, and some upcoming calendar events are shown as a slice at the bottom of the ambient display and on the lock screen, although I haven't been able to bring that back up with different calendar events. The only time I've seen it is when I had a calendar event called work. And now for some changes to the notifications. Now recent notifications show up with a bell icon next to them, or it might be notifications which played a notification sound, still not too sure about that. And there's no more swiping left. That'll reveal the snooze and notification display options, although Google has confirmed that they'll give users an option to define whether to swipe right or swipe left to reveal those options, which is very good. Now they've also sectioned off into two groups here, I presume into some kind of priority based system, although I'm not too sure on what exactly it is, but it does separate and segregate some notifications. And that's about it. So there might be another video for the next beta about any other changes, but maybe I should leave them until Android Q leaves the beta and is official on our Pixel devices and of course newer devices out there. But should anything major change, I might decide to make a video on that. But anyways, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comments section. But if you're looking to chat or to get some help, feel free to join us on Discord. The links are down below. And it's just so much easier than using YouTube's comment system, which frankly, I lose a lot of replies and I end up having weeks between conversations, so it's definitely not the best way to go about getting help. But if it's just a quick message, then I can do that. But anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, happy flashing.